Before this video starts, make sure you stay tuned to find out about the giveaway I'm doing with Balesa. I'm not gonna lie to you, I am currently burnt out. I've been experiencing it for the last few weeks and I've been doing as much as I can to process it, manage it, work through it, accommodate myself, and I've been doing a good job of it, I think so. But the one piece that I only just started doing in the last couple of days that has been so supportive is having a burnout specific morning routine. When you are an ADHD or like myself, which is a lot of what we talk about on this channel, so if you like that stuff, hit subscribe. If you're an ADHD or like myself, you are waking up and starting your day in a dopamine deficit, meaning you don't have all the motivation and excitement in the world. You're starting your day in this like, ugh. You know? And so it's important for us as ADHDers to build dopamine first thing in the morning as it's going to help propel us into our day. Now, when you are burnt out, it can be really hard to do that in the morning, harder than normal. And I think a lot of us get stuck in this space then of not building enough dopamine for ourselves to not only manage the day to day, but to get ourselves out of uh, burnout. So today we're gonna talk about the burnout morning routine that I have been following. It's important for me to say, this might not necessarily work for you, or there might be bits and pieces that work for you. If you haven't already watched my video on routines, you should start there. Watch this video first. The thing is with burnout that I specifically want to call out is that burnout requires change. If nothing changes, if you continue to exist in the same way, if you continue to do your work in the same way, show up for people in the same way, if nothing changes, the burnout will persist right? The biggest thing when it comes to burnout is making change to adapt, to allow yourself rest, recovery, or whatever it is you need during that time. So I want to call out that for ADHDers specifically, a morning routine built around dopamine can be really supportive, especially when you're in burnout, uh, but all the time. But when you're in burnout, you might actually need more of a restful morning just because it's hard to exist when you're burnt out, right? So we're gonna try to balance those two with this morning routine. Out to change, I still kind of can't believe that this is real, but the world's first ever silent vibrator is here. Like silent, no noise sub audible full power <laughs> and lucky for you guys i am doing a giveaway with balesa where literally everyone wins a free toy meet the whisper bullet <laughs> this is the world's first silent bullet vibrator balesa's new whisper tech makes sure that you never need to choose between power and discretion you can put your pleasure first without waking up the entire household or even your partner sleeping right next to you let's test it out <laughs> Exactly. You can't hear anything. It is on. It's on. <laughs> the Whisper Bullet is luxurious and aesthetic, but it packs a serious punch. <laughs> and she's powerful, but somehow completely silent. I don't, I really don't get it, but I love it. <laughs> the big question is, it'll stay silent, but can you? <laughs> Everyone who signs up gets a free Whisper Bullet or a free Air Vibe with your Whisper Bullet order. That's a $99 free gift. <laughs> so click the link in my description to get your new vibe. Back to the video. Now, if you're like me, my last few weeks of morning routine have been not the greatest. I've been trying to sleep as much as possible and I've been kind of self-sabotaging by staying up too late and then sleeping in as late as I possibly can, quickly get ready and then start my day. And that's actually doing worse for me than if I were to lose a little bit of sleep, get up and actually do things for myself. So my first piece of advice when it comes to a morning routine for burnout is you need to first manage how you are going to bed at night. I started putting a strict rule in place of 11 p.m. no more phone. I can stay up if I'd like to. I can do other things. I can journal, I can paint, I can read, whatever it is, but no more phone. So it is currently 11 p.m., which means no more phone, but I don't actually feel tired. So I think that I'm gonna read my book for a bit and see how that does. I've literally been reading for 15 minutes. I am ready to go to bed. <laughs> and what I seem to do is 11 p.m. hits and I turn my phone off, I put my sleep music on and I am lying there and I'm like, well, I guess I'll go to bed. Um, and that has allowed me to wake up at a more consistent time every morning. Now, here are the things that I like to do first thing when I wake up, when I'm feeling burnt out. One, 
I wanna grab my phone and get dopamine immediately, right? Um, and I can get stuck in this spiral of just staying on my phone for a super long time and then being like, oh my God, instead of sleeping, I just scrolled and now I need to get up. The dopamine you receive from your phone and from scrolling is so weak and minimal in comparison to moving your body or getting up and doing something creative or just literally almost anything. Like the dopamine comparison, it feels different. So what I started doing for myself is the first thing I did every morning when I wake up is I now immediately go to my Spotify and look for my day list of the day. One, I think the day list titles are the funniest things in the world. Here are a few. I think they're so funny. And so it's actually like this nice thing that I can go and I can see what is the day list of the day. Ha ha ha, that's funny. Play my day list. I don't care what it is, play it. And I just put my phone to the side and I will then get up, I'll go brush my teeth, do the minimal things in the washroom. For myself, that is just brushing my teeth, brushing my hair, peeing, maybe pooping, depends. <laughs> and I try to give myself a really nice sensory morning. So I try to keep the big lights off, I'll maybe light some candles first thing in the morning. I have some really pretty lights that I put on the ceiling in my bedroom. And I try to just have a low sensory morning. So nice music in the background, nice lighting uh, all around me. Um, maybe I'll even light my incense in my main living room space so that I can smell, you know, this nice scent as well. Um, the low sensory like support is super restful for me. So this is not only going to give me dopamine because it feels good to be in that space, but it's also going to give me that rest that I need when I am stuck in this burnout state. Now, usually when I'm feeling burnt out, the last thing I want to do is like do my hair, do my makeup. And really what my brain wants me to do is throw on a big sweater and uh, big baggy pants and just be comfortable. That is okay. That is totally fine to do. And if your brain is asking for that, maybe you give it. Um, but by like day seven or eight of me doing that, I realized it was actually a hindrance to me and not a benefit because when I get myself feeling good, I do that by getting myself looking good. Like when I do my hair, I do my makeup, I put an outfit on that was really intentional. I feel better. The dopamine rises because I feel good in my body. Our burnout state will often ask us for comfort and comfort only. Um, and again, it's a balance of sometimes comfort is important and really good for us. Sometimes it can be a hindrance. And so for myself, I was challenging myself to like live between this middle ground where I was able to put clothes on that made me feel good, but weren't necessarily super comfortable because I want to be able to still get through my work day and being in too comfortable of clothing will just get me on the couch or in my bed because I'm like, I'm cozy and I just want to lie around. Um, so actually getting in an outfit that just makes me mentally feel good can be super, super helpful. In the morning, I really like to go slow. I like to give myself like a an hour or two hours in the morning to get ready and just move slowly. Um, I like to make myself a cup of tea. I like to kind of lounge around a little bit. Maybe I read for a bit or I journal in the morning and that can feel really good. But the other thing is I need to be realistic with my energy levels because generally in my morning routines, in my most likely in my ideal morning routine is walking my dog first thing in the morning and for a long time, this was like a non-negotiable, even on my minimum days, I would take my dog out. But I realized during the burnout periods that I was uh, existing in, it just felt impossible to get up and go outside. It, it felt way too massive. And the barrier of entry was so high that I just wouldn't. And not only would I not walk my dog, I wouldn't then do anything else because I felt so guilty about not doing it that it felt like I couldn't do anything for me. So my burnout morning routine actually takes that dog walk out of the equation. I have either hired a dog walker, my beautiful assistant has walked him for me, um, or I do it later in the day when I have had time to build up dopamine throughout the day so I have more motivation to be able to do it. Usually like a lunchtime walk around the block, um, works really, really well for me. So I want you to be realistic with yourself as well. Is it realistic in your burnout state to get to the gym? Maybe not. Is it realistic in your burnout state to go for a walk in the morning? If it is, great, do that. If it's not, that's okay. You're not a bad person for not being able to do that. 
who knew? <laughs> but this next piece is by far the most important piece of the burnout morning routine, okay? So let's say you've done your sensory rest, you've had your relaxing morning, you've skipped scrolling on your phone and instead put sensory aid there with music or whatever. You've gotten yourself ready for the day in a way that makes you feel good. So you've got some extra dopamine in your system. Now this next piece is the one that you can ignore everything else that I've told you if you do this one thing, which is eat something, drink something. I know when I am burnt out, the last thing I wanna think about is food um, because it takes executive functioning to be able to do that. So I make sure that when I am burnt out, I have access to foods that are so simple and so easy. Microwavable burritos, delicious, easy. Throw it in the microwave, eat it. My rule for myself is that I get something to eat every morning and if I don't finish it, that's okay, but I have to start it. Okay, and most of the time I do end up finishing that meal, um, but sometimes I'll get halfway through and I'm like, I just am like nauseous or I'm not feeling good or I'm so burnt out, I get like, don't even wanna think about eating. I eat half of it, wrap it up, put it away and I'll eat it later. But getting some sort of sustenance into your body is going to do wonders for your brain and your dopamine levels and your ability to function for the rest of the day. You need fuel to manage your day to day, uh, but you need fuel as well to pull yourself out of that burnout. If you don't have fuel, what are you, how are you gonna do it, right? It's important. So grab some food, grab some water. It can be the easiest food. It can be the easiest types of like, uh, water. I grab bubblies because there's just a can. Something about drinking a bubbly dog. Something about drinking bubbly just feels good. <laughs> so I would love for that to be your number one priority every single day, even if it is just a granola bar, which was my breakfast today. It was something in my system and I did notice the benefits of it almost immediately. I have two more pieces of advice for you. The first one is get support and ask for help or accommodations at whatever level is accessible to you. I am incredibly privileged um, because I've worked very, very hard to be able to afford an assistant that comes to my home and can help me with things. Um, it's a really important aid for me that I can afford, but she's able to do my grocery shopping for me, help me do regular tasks around the house. And so I can focus on caring for myself uh, because these like everyday chores are dealt with. I realize that that is like very, very privileged of me to be able to do. And the average person would not have access to that and that's totally understandable. Um, but there are other levels of support, asking your partner in some ways to support you more as you're dealing with burnout, asking a friend to help you out if you're able to, you know, being able to say to, to a friend like, hey, can we actually body double eating breakfast for the next couple of days because I've been finding it really hard to eat. That's a really wonderful way to get free support from someone in your life. So ask for help if you need it. Um, and maybe you don't know how to receive that support or ask for that support. And if you don't, put in the comments the things that you are struggling with right now and maybe some other folks that are watching this could provide you some options. Now this final piece of advice is only gonna work for a select few of you that are like me. I am so fucking extroverted. I need to be around people as much as possible. And I noticed that when I am burnt out, I actually isolate more than my brain needs. I need to be around people to function and to like get filled up. And because I work from home, I don't often spend a lot of time around people other than like my friends after work or I volunteer and coach a soccer team. Like there are places that I'm able to see people after work, but I realized something that was that has been so helpful for me with my burnout is getting out of the house. Um, early in the morning. So I'll finish all of my routines and then get myself to a coffee shop and do my work there. Even if it is just for an hour, being able to get like a nice little treat and be in the presence of other people for me is very fulfilling and it fills up my cup in a way that I otherwise wouldn't be able to just from home. Um, and so if you are an extroverted person, maybe consider if you are isolating yourself currently, do the opposite, push yourself to be around people. Now, if you are an introverted person, or maybe you're both, um, finding that balance can be really helpful. If you're both introverted and extroverted, maybe going to a coffee shop once in the week would be really helpful for you. But if you're an introverted person, 
my suggestion for you is to create sacred work spaces. So no more working from bed, no more working from the couch, work from a desk space that feels like work so that when you are able to take rest time, it feels more restful because you've spent your day at your workspace and then your bed will feel extra restful because you haven't touched it all day. Whereas I know there have been times where I will work on my laptop in bed, but I don't feel like I'm resting because I'm still working. And then when I finish work, I've spent all day in bed. And so now being in bed doesn't feel restful. So put those two things in two different places. Your work needs to exist one space and your rest needs to exist in another so that you can get the full benefits of rest when you take that time. So I'm curious, what pieces of my burnout morning routine would support you and which maybe wouldn't? Tell me in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for anybody watching, please feel free to put those in the comments. I'm sure everybody would love to hear it. So thank you again for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing and liking. It's crazy that you did that without me asking. If you did, you're my favorite. <laughs> A reminder, I am so proud of you for putting in the work to yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. So it's pretty fucking cool that you're doing it for yourself. I love you so much. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.